Hello everyone. Today for a change, not diving into Ukraine as much, uh, but talking to old friend Pimpi, not old as an age, but old as a, how long we know each other. Um, and before we start asking questions, I want to say this, please join my mailing list. Um, check me out on Instagram. You will not regret beautiful pictures there. And you can check my website as well. You have my Patreon down below and all the links to Pimpy if you haven't met him yet. This is Pimpy. This is actually Lee from Pimpy's Investment Chat because people give me crap like, Anya, how you can speak like this? And I'm like, I call Pimpy Pimpy because it's Pimpy's Investment Chat. Welcome back, Pimpy. Hi, sweetie. How are you? It's nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. So. I was thinking this is really something uh, very current and I am quite interested in this. And we are going to talk around Russia today a lot because um, Russia set a fixed gold price that will be, I think, for one um, ruble, 5,000 5, rubles. 5, yeah. Will be for one gram of gold, which is uh how much is it 58 dollars per gram yeah about 55 is 55 57 somewhere around there so my question is this within this situation that russia sets a fixed gold price first of all shall we buy rubles straight to the point shall we buy rubles now at least some amount um and how this will affect gold overall worldwide so initially when we they invaded and we put sanctions on them the ruble lost like half its value within a couple of days and i told everybody look here's just like any other opportunity but i told them you know you would have to have a lot of money in order to make a lot of money i think for every hundred thousand dollars or so you would only make about a thousand off it once it went back to its regular price and it was it worth it but once they announced that they were going back to the gold standard, and since then they've already recovered all their losses, just so you know. So it's back to where it was. And now they're talking about going back to the gold standard. So once they go to the gold standard, their currency, the ruble, is going to be really valuable because it's backed by gold. So I anticipate it really going up in value. People want me to speculate, and I was like, I, I really don't want to. But if I had to guess, you know, I don't want to, you know how we, everybody wants their, the Iraqi dinar to be $3.22 for every one US dollar. You know, I'm saying I can see where the Russians are, you know, one to one maybe, and, and maybe a little bit more valuable where they're more than one US dollar per ruble. It just, here's the, the thing that depends on it. One is the supply and demand. Are people going to, get involved and start buying the rubles. I think so. That's because Putin's about to offer oil at such a discounted rate that even people who are supporting the sanctions and who mm -hmm. have implemented sanctions against them are gonna, it's gonna be too tempting. They're gonna want it. Now, the only way you could buy the oil is you have to buy the rubles. And if the rubles mm -hmm. are, it, what this does, it strengthens the Russian ruble. And that's before the golds, you know, backed by it so once you back it by gold so you're feeling confident about their currency and you get to buy oil at such a major discount once it's implemented you're going to see a flood of money in gold go into russia is what you're going to see happen and if countries don't switch over to gold back like russia does their yes. currencies are going to be devalued big time because russia's is going to explode so our currency against the Russian ruble, the exchange rate is going to start to change big time. So you're going to be able to get more U.S. dollars per rubles. You know, my thing is this. If you hmm. for speculators, if you have an opportunity, it's going to be hard for where we are over here because we got them under sanctions. So they remove them off all of our exchanges. But for us over here, you know, if we could get your hands on some, I don't think there's any problem with, you know, snagging up one or two million and holding on and see what happens. I mean, seriously, I, I, if, if you can afford it. So, Pimpy here, I just checked before I connected with you, one ruble 
at this point is 0 0.013 US dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so what I what what I wonder because I, again I don't know. So that's a little more exactly. Pity. Right, but I want to I want to tell you this because I I was contacted by some of my followers lately I think, and they mentioned to me that they have relatives or friends who live in Russia, and they were saying that ruble is already backed by gold like there is already gold standard so can this be already the case because i mean that's i think this is exactly what's gonna be right it's gonna be ruble is backed by gold and it is but i think the, the real the real value see what what people should pay attention to is putin said that he's going to do this where you get 55 or was it five thousand? rubles for every gram or 5,500. Yeah. That's until June, I think he said 6th or 30th. So everybody's like, well, what's going to happen after that? Well, I think then you're going to see the real price come out, the real value. He's going to make an announcement that this is official. This is what they're going to do, period. So he's saying that what he's talking about, this ruble being backed by gold, is up to a certain time period in June. And everybody's trying to figure out what it is in June that's going to happen. Why June? Is he going to stop? I don't think so. No, uh -huh. he wants to crush what's going on. Now, the crazy thing is I heard somebody say there's a banker's war going on, and I was intrigued by what they were saying. And, and if I didn't, I said, man, if I didn't know any better, it makes it sound like Jerome Powell has been teaming up with Putin to outpush this gold standard. And the reason for that is it suppresses temporarily the price of gold which we want here in the United States. We don't. I don't believe but, this. I don't believe no, this at all. No, I'm just saying this is what the, the, the thought process is. It, mm -hmm. it holds it down for a little bit. Only a little bit. We have our government over here trying to tell us that this administration, that our economy is good, but they have to. Gold and silver being smashed every day by paper market. Every day to get smashed. That's why the prices haven't taken off. But look at copper. Look at nickel. Nickel went up so much that they closed the markets down, not once, not twice. But this shows you how much involvement the government has in our markets. They should not be. This is not a capitalist country anymore. It's a manipulated capitalism, a free-flowing capitalist market. The government would be jumping in there and interfering with the price of copper, interfering with the price of nickel. They closed the markets down not once, twice. Now we just found out they put a cap on the price for silver at $30. You know, it's like, wait, what are you doing? Who gives you that right to do that? Why are you doing that? You know what I mean? So the fact that the government is interfering with the free flowing markets tells you this isn't a capitalist country. So the reason why I bring that up is by capping off commodities, it makes it look like the economy is doing good because you're going, no, look, if, if things were crazy, you would see commodities take off. No, no, look, you're stopping the commodities from taking off. That or what they're doing is holding down the price while they accumulate as much as possible. So it's, we are in the gold. I mean, Russia is in the gold standard. Mm -hmm. the, the, the yuan is supposed mm -hmm. to be backed by gold. That's the announcement. Now you're looking at Saudi Arabia saying that they would sell their oil in the country's rubles and to the yuan for the yuan. This is yep. not good. And I said, if Iraq was smart, they would do the same dang thing as Russia. They would turn around and say, you have to buy our oil now in Iraqi dinars. And then turn around and back the dinars with gold. Man, that would that would pump up okay. the value. Okay, great, great. So now let's talk about this. Because, so to answer my question, this is, this is exactly my question. So if anyone can buy some amount of rubles, yeah. Why not, right? No, why not? Yeah. You know what? Just grab some and put, you know, if you get whatever you can afford. I mean, if I could grab like one or two million, I would and just put it to the side and just wait and see what happens. You know, it's like I said, it's what is it? It's just a little over a penny, you know? So, yes, it's, it's a little expensive, point, but 0. Yeah. 0.013 US dollars for one ruble. So, Pimpy, now let me let me ask you this your thoughts on this. Um, looks to me like to me that's how i see it we have russia we have india we have china we actually might have even hungary we might we have turkey 
and Iran. we might Iran, right? And we have what else? We have Pakistan or oh, Pakistan. That's why all the shenanigans there now, right now. Ha <laughs> ha! How convenient the timing. So yeah. we have. Oops! The missile have, got fired over like, there. Yeah. yeah, like oops, right? Yeah. We have we have those countries, and there are a few more that. I truly see this, that we there is like this new world order that they were pushed on the Western countries for real. And then we have that, that is like, we are not putting up with the with this banking system anymore. And we right. can totally collaborate between each other, um, separating ourselves from all of that. So now my question is, how this, in your opinion, if that if that will happen, it very much likely looks like how this will affect, like how this will affect the um, the trading or even you know like existing in those two different systems. So we have everybody knows about the World Economic Forum. People are waking up. People are wise to right now. We have the Great Reset. There are people who are resisting this. There's governments, you can see them. This is why we went after Putin, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Putin went in Ukraine. I'm sure everybody has their opinion why. We know the UN was surrounding Russia with missiles. This is what was happening. Not to mention the labs that were over there that were making the same types of viruses that we were infected with here. And Putin has the proof of that. And so, plus a lot of other criminality that are behind this whole great reset. You know, these people, these politicians are creating a havoc around us to drastically reduce the earth's population. We know this. If you haven't figured it out by now where they don't believe it, then you're getting way behind on what's really going on. So as far as trade is concerned, right now I think world countries are starting to wake up and go, wait, United States has been too much of a bully, and a lot of us are tired of it. They really are. Uh, we've seen what happened when Lebanon and Libya. Iraq, yeah, and wanted to go away from the petrol dollar. Gaddafi was removed. Saddam, mm -hmm. while well, Saddam Hussein, rightfully so. But uh, Gaddafi, I mean, my friend, she when Gaddafi was killed, I thought this was good for her. No, she cried so bad. She says, "No, stop listening to your media." She goes, "They lied to you." This guy gave us free healthcare, free education for college. And if we couldn't cover whatever sickness you had, if you couldn't get treatment here, the government flew you to other countries to get treated. And I was like, I didn't know that. She goes, no, because you have your media, they just lie to you. And it really was an eye opener to me. And I felt like crap because she was really devastated by this. And that's not what I expected. I thought for her to be going, oh, thank God, America's came to save us. No, 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 no. And so people are tired of it. You know, they use the SWIFT system to punish mm -hmm. people cutting them off from the banking system. And this is why China and Russia and then were developing an alternative system called SIPS, you know, C-H-I-P-S, SIPS. They wanted their own system and it's being developed um, or actually, this might surprise people, that would be the QFS system, believe it or not. That's the one in the AIIS building in China. And I told everybody about this and they got all pissed off at me and I'm like, you guys tell me to look into it. I look into it and I track it down where it is and who's running it. And people are like, no, no. Uh, okay, well then fine. You don't want to know the truth, that's okay. So they have SIP system. And so um, it's just like the SWIFT system. I don't think it's fully implemented, but people are already looking for alternative ways to get out of the SWIFT system. Even using cryptocurrencies, look at El Salvador, their official, Bitcoin is their official currency over there. It takes them out of sanctions. How do you sanction a cryptocurrency? You can't. So, you know, they're, you know, it affects their economy. They're allowed to do what they need to do because they do all their trades through cryptocurrencies. Now, all of a sudden, over here in the United States, we're finding problems with cryptocurrencies and we think we should do away with cryptocurrencies. You see what our government does? They want control of everything, not just this country here, but everywhere. They want to be the big bullies and people are tired of it. So, as far as the trade is concerned, you have countries that are reluctant to do sanctions hardcore against Russia because. Russia is intertwined with different countries in different ways that would affect them in a very negative way. European is supporting sanctions, but are they really going to sanction Russia fully? No, because their energy comes from Russia. You know what I mean? A lot of their food comes from Russia. So Russia's like, fine, you want to sanction me? Then I cut you off. Now what? You know what I mean? 
We got what? So you don't, let, so you don't, Pimpy, so you don't think this will really happen to this extent that they are, that this is completely divided into two different, um, you know, financial, economical structures. You don't think it will happen? It will be still. I have, I have, I have two thoughts on what I think might be really going on. If you go to the whole Great Reset, then you would believe this is planned and they're just gonna use Russia as an excuse for food shortages because of no trades and everything, energy shortages. Now we have to ration, we have to ration. And I think some countries are now rationing, rationally uh, energy, uh, rationing energy. So, you know, the, and everybody just points to Putin over here in the United States, they're saying that uh, the inflation is because of Putin, food shortages are because of Putin, gas prices are because of Putin, but people are going, no, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. They were already mm -hmm. that way before Putin. So people are wiser over here. They're waking up. But that doesn't stop the people who are in control from making life hard for us. The virus, in my opinion, was meant to kill a certain portion of the people. And so were the vaccines. So be careful about putting this on there. But now the food shortages, I told everybody like 10 months ago, get ready because BlackRock is buying up farmland and they're not growing crops on there. Why? They're buying, they're paying the people in the, in, the, in the cattle industry and in the chicken industry to kill the crops. I mean, kill, kill the herds instead of put, taking them to market. Why would you do that? You know what I mean? Unless your goal was to starve people. So whether my one thought is they're going to, this whole, this thing is planned and they're just going to use Putin as an excuse for food shortages. You won't be able to trade in energy shortages and, and they'll just push everybody in a great reset. My other thought is this, <laughs> then maybe Putin isn't the bad guy after all, and he's putting up a fight against the Great Reset. And that's what, because a lot of people here now believe that. The people are Finally, like- Finally, Pimpy, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. So exactly, they're going, they're going, oh my goodness. Yeah, they're going, this maybe is, Putin this is This is guy. like enough, the world, the world had enough of this. I'm sorry, I'm yeah. like, enough yeah. of it, enough. Have, well, I mean, people here, you know, this one guy blasts me saying, you know, the way I was talking about our country, you know, I'm saying, look, they're bullies. People are tired of them. You know, we're, we're doing, and the guy's like, man, you're just not a patriot. You hate your country. No, no, the, the, it's not about the people, the citizens. It's not about the citizens. It's about those who run yeah. it. The, the best. Think, yes. Yeah, it's not the country I'm talking about. It's these idiots that are running it. They're purposely killing a dollar, by the way. And we know they are. You know, people are like, why would they give up the power and the control of the dollar, the reserve status? Well, for the better good of the whole Great Reset, you know what I mean? Their goal is to push us into that one world currency, whether you, whatever you want to call it. But the, the name of it is called the Central Bank Digital Currency. And they're already talking about it over here being introduced by the end of this year. Not introduced, forced. You know, forced. So when people go, oh, all these people, all these countries are studying the Central Bank Digital Currency. They go, no, they're not. They're, they're, they're talking to the public to get insight. No, they're not. We're going to test it. No, they're not. Why? It's already been done. There's mm -hmm. there, everything when they tell you it's disruptive technology. And I've been saying this in my videos for a long time. Every time we have some type of disruptive technology like cryptocurrencies, it has already been invented, played yes. with, messed around yes. with, manipulated. Yes. The governments mm -hmm. already know what they're going to do with it before it's released. And now yes. when they talk about the central bank digital currency, no, they already know about it. It's already been created. They're just trying to figure out a way to implement it. I still feel it's not going to... Wait, oh, wait, I want to wrap up today. Will. So mm -hmm. if you can get rubles, buy them. If you can get gold, buy it, because they're going to go up. As much as okay. the United okay. States is okay. going to try to stop them, it's not going to happen. If Russia, and I'm not going to, I shouldn't say if, when Russia is successful in doing what they're doing, and other countries start following, you're going to see the, the shift. The shift. Yeah, you're going to see the veil lift off, first of all. They're going to be... The, the comics in the LBM, the London, you know, uh, bullion market, the LBM, a, that's what it is. Uh, they're going to be exposed for all the manipulation that they did because they're not going to be able to cover all their contracts. And it's already happening now. They're trying really hard to do that. But that whole suppression mechanism mm -hmm. is going to be lifted. You can't hold mm -hmm. it down no more. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see gold and silver shoot up in a major way. So okay, let's, buy let's gold, rubles, about... buy gold, absolutely. Is it is trade being affected? It's it's I don't think it's as affected as people think. What I think it is is for us in the United States, our supply lines haven't been affected because of Putin. 
they won't allow the ships to come in off the coast exactly. to unload to give us mm -hmm. our supplies because yep. in the beginning they were using coronavirus as an excuse but now what's your excuse you know they lift the corona restrictions because we got midterms coming up and the democrats are about to get their ass kicked and uh, we're already seeing signs of it. There's already special elections happening right now in deep blue areas in which the Democrats are losing. So that's that's a first sign. But bring the containers in. What are you saying? Oh, we're short workers. Uh, we're short employees. Yeah, because they don't want to get vaccinated. You know what I mean? They they refuse to. So people left their jobs. So you want to, you know, if you're so worried about the economy, you tell people, look, here it is. You're full grown adults. You know what's going on with the virus. You know what's out there. We're gonna go ahead and let you do what you want to do. You make the choice for you and your family. If you want the vaccine, then you get the vaccine. If you want to wear the mask, wear the mask. But we're not gonna force anybody else. Just open up the economy and it would thrive really quick. So and Pinky, open up the, the ports. Okay, there's just this word with V is very sensitive, but what I wanna say is um let's let me ask you this. So with with Russia, um having the gold standard this is like it's very specific what i want to ask you now when russia is having this ruble backed by gold which i think already happened but let's say officially is done what it means it means the ruble itself gets stronger and it also means that the gold the gold price is not going to be what we see right now correct no. so how how would you say i know this is speculation and this is like assumption and but what, what we can really expect um, to see as far as gold, because that, that value of gold, we're talking worldwide, is going to yeah. change, right? And it will well, be the same value. But, but we're, in, we're, we're in, and it's been now, we've been in a gold and silver squeeze now for a while. There is a deficit. There's not enough of it mined. So the, the physical demand, oh my God, the markets are going to, it's... We, <clears throat> At the very minimum, we should be at 3,000 for gold by the end of this year. It's being super conservative. Realistically, the, the prices that we hear people talk about, and this is without the government magically finding a way to suppress the price, but you're going to see gold probably up around 10,000, again, super conservative within this next couple of years. And silver, you can see they're already trying to put a cap on silver at $30 because you can't force people into this green energy deal without silver and if silver prices are really skyrocketing like they should if they're really skyrocketing then they're not going to be able to force us in this green new deal technology uses silver solar panels use silver our guided missile systems use silver so they're not you know they put they're putting a cap on there i i you know i don't silver should be up and i have a feeling it's going to get up there you know but but this five, makes me six, also, seven hundred dollars mm -hmm. an ounce how much five six seven hundred dollars an ounce if, if you think about a historic ratio of gold to silver it's usually 15 to 1. if mm -hmm. we reset the value that's when the government would interfere and say fine we reset at this they'll bring the ratio back into play and they'll reset at 15 to 1 because that's what it is historically okay so 15 to 1. But if they just let the markets flow, we already see what's happening to nickel. We already see what's happening to copper. We already see what's happening to palladium. You know what I mean? You can see the precious metals. They're doing everything in their damn power to keep them from taking off. They closed the markets down twice for nickel. Why? I would be people. If people really knew what was going on, if you woke up, even if they're not invested in nickel, the fact that the government is interfering in the free flowing capitalistic market should piss everybody off. Okay, it, capitalism has a way of weaning out poorly ran, poorly managed businesses and strengthening those who know how to plan correctly. That's the whole purpose of it. So you end up with companies who are very innovative, very successful, and the markets, our, our economy would be phenomenal, but it's being screwed with all the time. We know now Wall Street, there's no humans there now. We know it's computer algorithm. So you have a computer manipulating the markets, it's what it's doing. And so, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's crazy, crazy, yeah. absolutely crazy. I, I so, think you're gonna, at the very minimum, you're gonna see gold at three thousand by the end of this year, and I and I think that's being super, super conservative. But the bigger tell, we'll revisit after June. We'll know then mm -hmm. because okay, we will have implemented what it is that he wants to do, and okay. whatever it is, I'm, my my hope is whatever this is, 
it's going to smash the great reset right now. But with, I agree. I agree. But Tom um, on on Chris Marcus's channel, Arcadio Economics, he did an interview mm -hmm. with Tom Luongo, and Tom said, "Man, you got Jerome Powell on one sleeve, you have Putin on the other, Christina Lagarde in the EU, and they're just dismantling her right now." They're going to take all the dollars out of the EU, their own dollars, and crush the economy of the EU and end this whole Great Reset because that's like its base over there. You know what I mean? And I thought, wow, that's interesting. And how are they going to do that? The gold standard is what they're going to do. And they're going to take their dollars out of Europe. Europe's going to get Europe's going to get crushed, by the way. They really are. You people over there in Europe, you have to find a way to get into gold and silver. That's yes. going to be your saving grace. Trust me, it yes. will. Yes, yes. I mean, pretty much anywhere in the world, but yeah. but Let's here yeah. in Europe, yes, but in the US as well. So, Pimpi, I had this, just came to me this question. So I envisioned this. Let me ask you this. Um, let's, because that situation there um, with, with Russia taking care of things, let's put it this way. Yeah. Um, well, to the point to, now, did you know this? Wait, wait, to the wait, point wait, wait. Yeah, wait, let wait. me say the question. To the point when when people are liberated, it's, it's just the situation when they decide this is good, this is over, and finish. Okay, um, yes, it will it will come to the end. It, it's gonna come to the end, and it will be the good outcome from it. I'm absolutely certain. However, there is enormous suffering, and I I don't even want to talk about it now because I took another videos and it was a lot. So let's imagine we are at this point, at this moment. This already okay. happened, okay? So still, still, um, ruble is stronger, backed by gold. Now, what do you see is happening after that, that moment? Because, because the inflation is not going away, even, even though the Russia and Ukraine situation is at peace. The inflation still exists. And it's going to exist. So what happens when we go to the gold standard? And this is why, especially the United States, they're against the gold standard. You can only produce as much money as you have gold to support it. So it restricts the amount of spending our governments can do. And if you, res if you restrict the spending habits of our government, well, then that's a relief for the citizens because we don't pay so much in taxes and you reduce the dollar supply that's out there. So as far as inflation, it'll come. Uh, inflation will. It's not going to be high inflation. What I'm trying to say is it has a way of balancing. Everything would be balanced is a good way to put it. I'm trying to figure out a simplistic okay, way to but, say but so that it, is it only, balances everything. But sorry to interrupt you, but this is only no, no, in case. Good. I'm just adding to this. So this is only in case when there is a gold standard but if there is no gold standard yet and they are raising the um the rates the fed is raising the late the rates there is inflation how this looks like well the raising of the interest rates goal is to lower inflation is what it's supposed to do okay and uh and, and technically if you do it right but it also affects the gold and silver prices it brings them mm -hmm. down because it gives the impression that the bonds are the safest and the economy is going to be balanced but we would have to fully trust our governments being honest about what's going on. The real inflation rate here in the United States right now is 14%. That's what the real number is. And that's using the formula that's been used for decades. But the government keeps manipulating how they report our numbers to lie to you. So going to the gold standard brings balance to everything. This is why the governments don't like the gold standard. It restricts them from going willy nilly and making themselves rich and making their friends rich. Now, don't get me wrong, they'll find still little tricky ways, but it limits their power. You can't just print money out of control like we've been doing. You can't do that. You would totally kill your currency. And that's why they hate it. So going to the gold standard, if the world goes back to the gold standard, it's the best thing for it. It exposes a lot of these little schemes that's going on in our markets. And I'm looking forward to that. I really want people to be pissed off. And I mean pissed off at the level where you're scaring politicians to death about what you might do. They're uncertain about it because they need to be that way. Because right now, they don't give a crap about you. 
just spit mm-hmm. in your face and don't give a crap. They don't care. They're way out of control. But the gold standard, I think, brings a lot of balance to the world's out of control economies. Right now, you can see because we allowed them to do what they've done, they've put us in this position where we're looking at a worldwide market crash and it is going to affect everybody in a very harsh way. What I hope that triggers in is the debt jubilee is what I'm hoping because people are gonna be so pissed that the government's gonna go, oh, well, I don't wanna get hung or get my head decapitated. Hey, debt jubilee for everybody. You know, that's what I'm hoping happens. But uh, it will bring balance. We, we, the inflation will go down. Interest rates will be more um, rational. Uh, but the whole goal, I mean, the whole reason for raising interest rates is to keep inflation under control. But unfortunately, they're going to have to do it. The rate hikes so much that it's going to seem, man, it's going to be, it's going to be very bad. You know what I mean? The interest so, rates are going to have to jump up. So, Pimpy, now how that will affect those currencies like from Iraq or Vietnam or those countries? How those very, very undervalued currencies well, inflation, will, will know, change? Yeah, well, inflation hurts your currency. Right. That's why it's important for you to get it under control. A perfect example of that is Zimbabwe. Look at their inflation. Venezuela, you know, look at their inflation. Mm-hmm. You know, they got these one trillion dollar bills. You know, that's how bad mm-hmm. inflation is there. So you have to get it under control. And usually raising interest rates is how you do it. That's one way. But you really have to open up the economy and create jobs. That's another one. People have to be paying taxes. That's another thing. But if you have your economy closed because you have restrictions and people don't want to get vaccines, and the trade supply is reduced because you have the ships off the coast. And you know these are the mechanisms that help keep inflation under control. They're actually doing the opposite. And then they're just lying to you saying that's under control. So how does it affect the currencies? Well, if inflation gets out of control, which it will, because- No, I mean gonna... something else. No, I mean, when, when there is a gold standard, okay, which will be the case, how the value of Iraqi dinar or Vietnamese dong will change, improve pretty much. That's what I'm saying. Well, How yeah, it puts everybody on more of a level playing field. Again, it can't, it keeps corrupt government, it exposes corrupt governments because if you're on the gold standard and, you know, if, let me put it to you this way. If I say I have one gram of gold backs every dollar that I have, right? And you're sitting over there in your country and you have your dollar with nothing supporting it, People are going to go, wait a minute, your dollar isn't worth anything. This one has gold with it. So they'll buy this right. one and leave yours alone. So your right. people are going to be pissed at you. So what do you have to do? Well, then you have to turn around and match it. You have to match your one gram of gold for every dollar. So what do we have? One gram of gold for this dollar, one gram of gold for that dollar. It's an even playing field. Do you see how that works out? So that means that every currency will be equal. So this will be, so you, you're saying that one just, just, dollar yeah. will be equal to one ruble and it will be equal to one Iraqi dinar will be it'll one be, to one. It'll be a more even playing field based on the realistic currency value of the ability of the ability of that country to produce. Okay. Okay? okay. So in other words, if I'm just a country who's importing, not producing anything, well then my currency has a different type of value to it. But it does bring everything more level to each other. There's still going to be some slight differences based on the country's ability to produce or the resources that they have, obviously, but it's not going to be so out of whack. It's going to be a lot more balanced. So if you're talking about the Iraqi dinar versus the U.S. dollar, yeah, it's going to be a lot more, uh, to me, a lot more of an even playing field there as far as exchange rates are concerned. Again, you're going so, to have those, yeah. those differences. I mean, Iraq has a ton of oil. You know, there's small differences. So you're never going to have them one for one all around the world. That's just not going to be possible only because of some countries import more than others. Other ones export more than others. Some got resources. You know what I mean? Some have got a, a younger generation that's more productive in work. There's all these little things that make a difference when you're thinking about the value of a currency. Um, so, but a lot more even than it is now. Okay, that's got for it. sure. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, so, um, you can tell mm-hmm. this great reset is falling apart. That Obama mm-hmm. is now in the White House again. And people yeah, exactly. are complaining. This is no, nothing to do with the healthcare people. This is nothing to yeah. do with the yeah, with like, oh, care I'm there as an no, advisor. No, 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 what would no, you no, mean? No, no, like, no. no, 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 no. It's like, yeah. We, yeah. We, 
Yeah, well, I said this was his third term. He's running these, but now he's absolutely. Be this is front. strategy. Absolutely strategy. Yeah, I agree. Oh, no, but, he's a, he, Biden was supposed to be the puppet, and Kamala well, I Harris don't think he's on. he won't be. He won't be there much longer. The, the sleepy Joe. Oh, so well, Pinky, just, let me let but, me ask you this. Let me ask you this now about crypto. The last the last question is about. Um, I will ask you a straightforward question, okay? Yeah. Because especially yesterday, I really put some time to research more. I don't want to give the details yet because I have to write it down and then I will talk to you next time with the exact dates, names of people, what took place and so forth. But let me ask you straightforward. Do you think that all the crypto is controlled and manipulated and do you think they're going to crash it i'm not saying this is my opinion this is just a question i'm asking what do you think that they're going to yeah, crash a, the crypto a crash well i have two thoughts on this i think crypto was used as a way to indoctrinate people in the digital currency okay but i do have a friend that talks to me all the time and he's saying look let me show you where you're wrong in that thought process the part that i refuse to let go is I tell people the government can affect cryptocurrencies and the fact that they can makes to me, it makes it no good. It's all cryptos are is a digital fiat dollar. There's nothing supporting it besides the fact that people believe that crypto is worth that value. What is it? What do you get out? There's nothing tangible there. Now, you know, a decentralized platform that can't be manipulated is valuable to everybody. If you can actually have one. But the government's learned they can't actually get into the crypto and affect it unless they actually buy a ton of it and then, you know, do what they're doing now. And now we got derivatives now. That's You don't want that because you could use the paper market to manipulate the prices of cryptocurrencies like they do gold and silver. But what we're finding out is this. What do we see happen? And, and this exposed crypto as weak. They had the, the exchanges shut down. Or they told the exchanges to block... Yes transactions between these particular people. Well, if this is a decentralized platform, you're not supposed to have mm -hmm. the ability to do that. And the fact that they do shows you that it's not truly decentralized and that it can be manipulated and that it can be controlled. And you don't want that. A true free flow and decentralized platform is what you want. So can I see, I don't think in the past, I would say they're gonna crash all cryptos. I don't think so. You're gonna see a handful of them survive. We know XRP is now, part of the new world order. That's their crypto for the central bank digital currency. That's out in the open now. And I told everybody, you know, people hate it because they, they love XRP so much. Oh, and I want, yeah, I know I watched this video of yours. It was just like two days ago or yesterday, actually. Well, I yeah, but I've been, hit, this... I've been hitting XRP hard now for Right, months. but this is, yeah. this is actually, it was a very interesting video, Pimpy, that you did about XRP, I have to tell you, the last Thank one. You. Yeah. And I'm going to put this down below because I know a lot of people are very passionate about this XRP and I'm not here to like argue good or bad. I'm just yeah. here to talk about it and hear your opinion. And well, here, I, I will, I'll lay it yeah. out for them real quick. Let me just lay it out. So what we're finding out is, is that a handful of cryptos, XRP, Solana, Cardano, Cardano. Uh, Crypto.com, Algorand, I can't remember them all off the top of my head, Polkadot, are all contributing to the development of the central bank digital currency. And if you know anything about the central bank digital currency, then you would know that's not a good thing at all. They're trying to force us into the central bank digital currency, which is a programmable currency that has an expiration date on it. So you can't save your money. It expires. <laughs> and Crazy. they can program what you can and can't buy with it. So you don't want that. That's the government controlling your money. So this is the difference between wanting to be free people versus wanting to be controlled and enslaved people. Because if they force us into the central bank digital currency, you're now captive of our government because they control your money. And the people that are responsible for them are those cryptocurrencies I'm telling you about. They are helping with the development of the central bank digital currency. So when you buy those cryptos, you're investing into platforms and companies that are using your money to find a way to manipulate and control every single human being on this planet. And that's not hyperbolic, that is the truth. And XRP is a major player in this. 
you got Brad Garlinghouse out there telling you they want to join the New World Order. They're looking forward to the New World Order. And so when they say that kind of stuff, you have to take a step back and go, whoa, buddy, what do you say? And when I exposed it, people got mad. They're like, no, Pippi, that's not it. Oh, man, they're they're going to be on the quantum financial system. Oh, oh and I'm starting to, starting to second so, guess. It. So, Pimpy, this is like a, like a testing ground, pretty much, with those currencies for I the, the CBDC, yeah. right, yeah. right. And then... When I because I'm I'm very objective hearing all of this. I didn't mm -hmm. invest in any of those. But what I'm what I'm thinking, like using common sense, I think, mm -hmm. well, if this is the case, which can be very much is very, very much likely that's the case. I'm not yeah. saying it is. So if they if they have done it, if they have created those um, tokens and they are testing them, it's like a testing ground, and then there has to be a certain a certain, I, I don't want to use the word propaganda, but a, a certain um, advertisement about them or a certain approach to them to introduce them to people so people could actually trust it, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm using my common sense. You, like YouTube any, influencers. Yeah. There's a ton of them right. out there. You see them all the time out there. Oh, XRP to the moon, you're going to get rich. Well, the, the thought of getting rich off of cryptocurrency, like you hear in the news all the time, all these people became rich. The thought of possibly becoming rich because you invested a thousand dollars in a cryptocurrency, it's alluring to everybody. It is. Absolutely. Who doesn't want to be rich? But before you invest in any kind of crypto, you should probably look into them a little more and figure out what they're doing with your money. If XRP, it's not if no more, we know now they are, that XRP is going to be responsible for the central bank digital currency. Why the hell would you have your money in that? That's like me investing money into a product that I know kills people and then complaining that the people are getting killed. You know what I mean? If, I, if there was a product out there that kills one in every three people, you could buy it for a penny of stock right now because you know it's going to go up to $100 per stock. Why the hell would you buy it? Regardless of how rich you're going to get in it, that just makes you sick and twisted. But the central bank digital currency, its goal is to enslave every man, woman, and child on the planet. That's not hyperbolic. It has an expiration date on the damn currency, which means if you don't use it, it expires. So how can you ever start a business? How can you ever accumulate wealth? How can you ever have a retirement savings? The thing expires. That's what you're putting. That's what you're pushing people into when you invest into XRP. They're one of them. Solano, again, all the other ones. I named them off in my videos. They're, and I showed you what their contribution is to this central bank digital currency. I did a video one time laying it all out. I showed everybody each crypto and what their job is and what they're doing to help push this great reset. The new world do you, order. Do you think it's hard for people to even look at this and consider that this is the case? Not objectively, because they're so... Convinced. Programmed. Yeah, Convinced. Pro programmed. Well, it's a, you know, what do you call that when somebody that's uh, influenced? They are, they, they suffer from the what do you, cognitive dissonance. Mm -hmm. That even when you tell them the truth, they're so sold on their crypto and they're expecting to get rich that they don't want to let it go because the money is more important than the consequences. When you're mm -hmm. at that level, then there's something wrong with you. You need to let it go. When you are more focused on the money than the consequences, that's really bad. That's really bad. I, I talked to a guy who's a great inventor. And one of the things he told me one time in a conversation, he was saying, I said, yeah, is there any kind of advice you give to young inventors or anybody that comes up with the idea? He goes, yeah, there's three questions you have to ask yourself. One, whatever I am creating, does it benefit everybody? Everybody, okay? Two, whatever I'm creating, does everybody have access to it? You know, it's not just for the rich. It does everybody have access to it? I said, okay. And three, this is the most important one. The third one, can the government take control of my invention and use it against the people? If you say yes to all three of those, don't invent it. And I thought, well, that's interesting. You know, the first two is what throws you off the questions. You're like, well, that would be a good thing. But it's the third one that he's trying to throw you off mm -hmm. with. And that is if your government can take control of it and use it against people don't invent it so well you it, know what 
this is brilliant because this actually makes me think about those technologies that have been hidden from us for so long yeah. and this is exactly but you know well we've been hidden or or there are technologies that actually are not given to humanity yet i'm talking about different civilizations right now okay like i talk with aliena danan on my channel that those mm -hmm. those very very evolved civilizations and the technologies they have they're not going to give certain technologies to humanity yet because exactly like you said this can be used by the dark side again to weaponize it exactly yeah no i, so, I thought listening to that i was listening to an interview with uh, kathleen fitz and she said well most people don't realize you're in the middle of a 10,000 year old a 10,000 year old battle, a 10,000 year old war. And she just said it in passing, like it was no big deal. Cause she was talking about the vacant system and uh, what the plans are of the great reset. And she was saying that what they, she wouldn't say what they wanted to do but I knew what they wanted to do. I showed you the Yuri's videos. Their goal is to hack into the brains of humans. They didn't hide it. This is the right hand man of Klaus Schwab the founder of the World Economic Forum and the great reset telling everybody and what did he say he said our job as elites is what he said and and he's saying why dictators and tyrannical governments failed in the past is because they didn't have this technology that they have now he says we now have as elites we now have the ability to hack into the all at the same time well how do you but, hack into the brains of people how about all mm -hmm. those individuals who got the jab right something but, was put into you you know what i mean right right but you know pimp and we will, I, I want to end here. You know how, how I see all of this? This just literally came to me. I think, I think, I know that the light actually already won because if that wouldn't be the case, we will not even have the level of awareness all around the globe as people have. So what I'm talking about, this great awakening or the awakening of millions of people. Yeah, those are millions of people who are waking up would not take place and we would be still in coma. I was like two years ago, I didn't know any of it. I mean, I knew some, but not to this extent. And we would be still like the hamsters on those wheels. So I think this is the most evidence and the proof that it's not gonna happen. All of this, what they were planning, it will come to the very, very edge and it's not gonna happen because, because people are actually aware what's happening. The number of people, there's more and more and more and more. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, they, yeah, well, the one guy said either the world is going to experience the great reset or the great no. awakening. That's yeah. what he said. And I, and I think we're at the great awakening. You know, I, 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 I was talking about that dream I had like a year ago, and people were like, did it mean anything? Maybe it was a vision. I go, no, I don't, I don't know if it's a vision, but it was an interesting dream. But I can tell you that absolutely, whatever was going on grabbed the attention of God because the presence of God was being, every day was increasing. So whatever was happening, it was enough to, uh, for a lot of people to have a real spiritual awakening. And I still think the growth is there. We are wise now compared to where yes. we were six, seven years ago. And people are starting to really awaken, I think to the God conscious, in my opinion, you know, whether people yes. are religious or not, that doesn't matter. You, you're still part of God's plan. <laughs> you know, if God loves you. Just believe that. And uh, he realized that some of you have been lullabied into a sleep that mm -hmm. you can't help but be in. But the rest of us are awake and uh, we'll be aware for you. You know, we, we, we're going to pull this. We're going to we're going to win this. I know it's not easy road, but we oh, will yeah, get to this jubilee. I'm, yeah. I'm absolutely certain it's just it's like you can see all the all the shenanigans now like you can see all those it's it's pathetic actually it's really pathetic because it's like you're playing the game with someone and you know they are lo losing and they are they are still trying to win i'm like it's impossible doesn't matter what move you make you're like already done like you're done so like just leave the room and you know make yourself whatever and just goodbye where we, 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 we are right <laughs> now is we're actually and if you think about it we're in the fourth right yeah when world war ii ended we, yeah, didn't the stages. In and we brought all those criminals here to the united states and proper and, and paper a project paperclip and then yes. we let them run willy-nilly and they became 
important influential people in our government, in NASA, science, you know Hollywood. what I mean? Hollywood. Yeah, Hollywood, yeah, Hollywood. And uh, now, he, I made a joke about this and I didn't want people to take it the wrong way, but I said, why is it always the people that's trying to take over the world? Why are they always Germans? You know what I mean? Because look at Klaus Schwab, man. You hear that guy talk, I go, oh, good Lord, man. That's like another Hitler when he talks. Well, he's Klaus Schwab. He's from Germany. So he is. And all his right-hand man, or not the right-hand man, but that guy's uh, from Israel, I believe it is. But the other people, when they talk, they all are from Germany. And I'm like, why? Why is Germany constantly at the forefront well, I, of all these movements? I don't think it's just Germany. I think, no, I think this Not is... this time. They're, they got buddies this time. They got partners but, this time. But it's so obvious now to people who who know what's going on. It's like like literally, you have you have a, a light shining on it. Like watch, you cannot unsee it. You just cannot unsee it. That's how I see right. it. So Pimpi, um, to those who never came across you, where they can find you, where you want them to follow you, and yes. Well, I got a YouTube channel called Pimpi's Investment Chat. Feel free to come by and check it out. We talk about gold, silver, cryptocurrencies, and foreign currency investments. And politics. News and network. politics. Politics yeah. too, sorry. I know. I try to, <laughs> try to, because I get in trouble by YouTube. But uh, I have Pimby's News Network, which I've been neglecting a little bit, but I got Doc I'm supposed to talk to today because there's all these things been going on in my life and I just haven't been able to focus. But I feel ready now. And, uh, you know, we'll start putting videos back on there. But that one, you have a subscription, it's only $3. Uh, per month um so you know i encourage people to go over there because we do speak without a filter but and then we have pimpy's investment channel on facebook so you can come join us over there we have a great community of people in there that if you have questions about some of the things i'm talking about if i can't respond directly then there's a lot of knowledgeable people in there and they're able to respond it has some really good administrative people in there they oversee the whole um group so it's, it's really nice but yeah come and join us over there at pimpy's investment chat i encourage you to do so Thank you so much, Pimpi. Always good to talk to you. You too, sweetie. I appreciate it. We, we're going to catch up in what we have, April, May. Yeah, like, let's see. This, let's see. Maybe towards June. Towards the end of June, I want to see what it is that, what is going on that he put a June deadline. I want to know. What's about um, the date, right? What's the date about? Yeah, well, it, well as Putin said, he's right. going to do the, the June go 6th. back until June. So I'm curious to see what, what his fans are. Whatever it is. I, you know, you have to think that whatever this is that he's going to do is going to smash the Great Reset. It has to be. This is why you see that sense of urgency from the United States going, we got to get Putin. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we got to kill the guy. No, I know, you know I know. It's madness. It's everybody. It's yeah. the, huh? Yes, yes, yes. And, you know, I'm in Poland now. So imagine next door. Oh, is that mm -hmm. right? Yeah, next door, next door. That's it. When you get off the air, so, I got a question for you. <laughs> no, it's you know what? It's because I'm here to hold the line. Yeah. I feel like God told me it's interesting before I left US. Well, you got I, a good soldier there. No, but no, Pimpy, I truly tell you, I was like, I asked this question. I said, is this the case that I supposed to be in United States in that time to to hold my light there? You know, like my light, my energy. And there are yeah. millions of us like this. And then I, I, and I made the decision to come back to Poland before any of this was happening. So I already had the ticket and everything. And when I came back, he, when I came to Poland, I already knew that this is the time for me to hold the light here now in this land, in this area. So there is a reason, you know, when I complete my mission here, who knows where I go? <laughs> well, God made a good choice. You know, you're a good person. Hold Thank the light you, there, sweetie. Hold the light. Be, Hold that, the light. be that soldier for God. I mean, that's the best we could do. Hold um, the gold but, standard light. Gold yeah, standard light. Gold standard light. There you go. <laughs> the shine of silver. I, keep, I tell people it's time to buy the shine. Man, people get a kick out of that now. So, so uh, everyone, yeah. everyone, check out uh, Pimpy's channel. Um, gold and silver. This is the way to go. Hold in your hand. And um, yeah, I, I think tomorrow I will go to the exchange place that we call in Poland Kantor and I will get a few rubles. Why not? <laughs> Give me some. Give me some. You can't buy. You can't yeah. buy because. Yeah, yeah, I can't. Yeah, see, look at that. That's what I'm saying off the air because they're going to go, oh, you're buying contraband because you're under sanction. <laughs>
It's like, you know, my friend sent me over 10 million Iranian reals. You know, people had a fit about it. I'm like, shut up, good Lord. But you know what, PP? There is a will, there is a way. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, everyone, for watching. Lots of love, and we're going to win this. Yep, absolutely. I feel positive about it.